Welcome to Udaipur. This is known as the Venice of the East in India and this is one of the seven lakes that they have in this city. So we're about to go and explore. Let's go. I'm in India for just over two weeks and Udaipur is my second stop. This is a group tour by True Travels and there's nine of us and only two pairs knew each other before flying out so we all became friends and it's a great way to make solo travel feel less daunting. Nine was such a good size and I loved travelling with them and our tour guide Suri. We're in Udaipur for two nights and have lots planned so let's get started. Welcome back everybody, today we are in Udaipur and this morning we had a Pam reading which was quite interesting and we also got my henna done. So I've got a nice little design on my arm. Where are you from? Scotland. Edinburgh Festival. Uh, close, Glasgow. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know the whiskey? Whiskey is risky, my dear. Run for fun. <laughs> <laughs> We're heading to go to lunch now for a rooftop cafe. But Udaipur is quite a bit warmer than Delhi, which is nice and we get to see a bit of the city. But we're also doing a city walking tour tomorrow of the palace and the temple here, which we just walked past. Oh, wow. The lunch was really good but I started to get really hot so we made our way back to the hotel and I had a bit of shut eye for about half an hour and now we're out again walking around Udaipur and we've hopped in this golf cart on the way to go and see the lake we're going to do a sunset boat cruise. Alright! Ta ta! Ta ta! Oh we've got some in there! Peter! <laughs> So we are inside the city palace complex now. On the right is the city palace. We are taking the royal boat. So there are two types of boat, which is a normal boat. It is very cheap and they are not allowed to go on the island we are about to go. And the city palace boat is allowed to go on the island we are going. Life jacket chic. We're on the boat. Why are these seats like nursery seats? Let's go. We have pulled up at the Palace Island in the middle, which used to be where the royal families would come for their pleasure. It's quite small, but I think there's also a garden in the corner that we will take a look at. These are quite cute to get a photo in as well. There's a little museum and there is also a bar and restaurant, but we're only on the island for about four to five minutes and the sun should be setting soon so we can get some nice pictures and then we'll get the boat ride back again. The boat ride was so nice and serene. It's nice to have a little bit of peace in, but it appears not even that busy a city, but any Indian city, it's nice to have a little bit of peace. And we all sat on the right, so we had the best view of the palace and the other amazing buildings. All the other buildings around about the lake now are hotels, like five star hotels that sometimes movies get filmed in or weddings are at and celebrities go to for the weddings as well. Apparently, Dua Lipa was literally in Udaipur about two weeks ago and that's crazy. This is properly beautiful. I feel like when I pictured India, this is what I was picturing, beautiful architecture, palm trees, maybe mountains, but this is such a nice, serene place to be. I understand why they use it as their pleasure island. Did you like the island, Megan? I did, it was very nice, thank you. Yeah, it was very good. It was quite beautiful, yeah. wasn't it? Nice and peaceful. Everyone reviewing their pictures? Yeah. <laughs> Sure. 
How are you? How was your night, brother? Yeah. yeah, look what I have. Yeah, this one is there. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Another beautiful day here in Udaipur. We've just had breakfast at the hotel and this is the rooftop of the hotel where we got to see the sunrise yesterday morning. You get complete views over at Udaipur and then in the other direction is the palace which we are going to be visiting today. We have arrived at the temple, walking up the stairs. <laughs> Woo. This place is beautiful. This is one of the places where we have to cover our shoulders and our knees, so we are all in temple attire and we're all taking our shoes off. When you come to a temple, these temples are made in such places where they clear the energies of the place, of the temple, before they build the temple. So they make sure that there are multiple years of meditation which are done on the land by these saints and sages and they clear the aura of the temple. The temples back in the time were made for people to go and sit for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour, two hour, whatever, just sit there and take all these positive energies in you. The energies flows from down to up. So when you're barefoot in these temples, because of there are positive energies inside the temples, all the energies from the ground is flowing inside you, which is positive energy. This is the Jagdish temple dedicated to Lord Vishnu, who is the operator of the universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a Hindu temple, but Hinduism is not a religion, it's a way of life. This temple has been in continuous worship since 1651, so it's not even one of the ancient ones. There are ones a lot older than this one. And we just went inside to see the Lord Krishna and the statue that they have of him and then every two minutes or so they close the curtain to feed him offerings and change his clothes and dress him and there were lots of women praying and singing, and singing worship songs about Lord Krishna and it was a pretty cool experience. Our guide Suri put our bindi on our head and now we're all enjoying the ambience. It's really good vibes. We are trying limpa because Linka. um Link <laughs> Because Zuri it's said it's it was like Fanta Lemon. You need to start again. <laughs> right, okay. Right. Limpa? No, it's Limpa. Right, cut, cut. <laughs> Today we are going to be trying Limpa. Suri said that it was like Fanta Lemon, but now it looks like lemon and lime. <laughs> Amy's going to do So the she's not convinced. A genuine feedback. That's nice, actually. Oh, <laughs> we're happy about better than Fanta Lemon. But it is nice. better than Fanta. Have you had Fanta lemon? Yes. This is way better than Fanta lemon. Lemon. <laughs> lemon. lemon. <laughs> I tried the mango one in Delhi, the ma Mazda. Oh, it's Mazda. Was yeah. it good? That was really yeah. good. 50 years of refreshing taste in India. Oh my god, 50 years. Wow. Well done, Limka. A scarf? Just put it over your head like that. <laughs> like what, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> We've made it to the palace, we're in the courtyard. These bumpy areas here used to be where the elephants would rest when the elephants used to stay here. Obviously they don't have elephants here anymore. They also have cages out the front where when the queens would come they would want tigers at the front of the palace. So they would go out and capture one from the jungle, keep it in there for a couple of days and then when the queens would leave again they would release the tigers back. But nowadays the courtyard is just used for weddings and obviously 
This is one of the main tourist attractions to do here in Udaipur. And I believe we're also gonna go inside, which I'm super excited about. It looks gorgeous. That is the coat of arms of the royal family of Udaipur, which are from the Sun Dynasty. They worship the sun, which is why you will see lots of murals of sun. And each state and different part of India used to have their own royal family. And now they're not really in charge anymore, but they still get respected by Indians as royalty. When you first walk into Udaipur City Palace, there is a sort of museum about the weaponry and the history of the city which I found really interesting. They would dress their horses up as baby elephants so that the elephants that the other states rode in on trying to invade wouldn't kill them. This courtyard was where they used to coronate all the kings before the 50s. They used to make sure that the king sits in this and they used to put about 100,000 gold and silver coins in it. After that the king used to go up there and from there he used to address the people who were standing downstairs in the courtyard that just saw the people These doorways are specifically small and five foot two, so that when any invaders came in and they had to go down to get in, there would be guards outside waiting with the sword and they would just chop their heads off. <laughs> Well, we've just come into this little outlook. It's stunning and the views are And we've got mountains to one side and the lake to another side. The palace was built over 400 years, which started in 1559. And it looks out over Lake Pachola, which is the biggest lake in Udaipur. Inside, you'll find a mix of museum style areas alongside rooms set up to emulate what they would have looked like when the royal family resided there. It's built in a flamboyant style and is the biggest of its kinds in Rajasthan. The palace is open every day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., but it can get busy. I could have easily spent the whole day exploring there. We didn't even have time to see it all. If you decide to visit with Without a tour, entry is about 400 Indian rupees for an adult, which is around four pounds. This bit in the middle is so beautiful when it's getting super busy now. We've all been getting photos with the pillars, and there's a beautiful garden in the middle which the children would come and they got to play holy with the colours in the middle of the pool there. It would be filled with water and gorgeous little bits at the top as well. I'm not quite sure what those are called. They're not stupas, but... This is gorgeous. The palace is known for its rare collections of ancient silver, paintings, sculptures and antiques. We got to see some of the different rooms where the royals would have lived and this is the king's bedroom. You can't go in but you can see the detail on the roof and the intricate design of these rooms. These were absolutely stunning and I'm so glad that I got to see this. Yard was used for the celebrations, the parties, the dances, and the kings and the queens and the princes and princesses would sit up there and watch. And now we're heading towards the dining room. Oh my goodness, it's so intricate. This, yeah, this is this was the dining room. Yeah. So there was like a table here. Yeah, they used to put the table here, and they used to sit here whenever there was a royal dining. Invitation. We're just leaving the palace now. I feel like I learned so much about Udaipur, Rajasthan and India as a whole and there's plenty of museums and bits that I would have liked to stay a bit longer but we didn't have time and you can stop and read all the little bits there. The rest of it's just gorgeous. We're just now going to walk five to seven minutes, Suri says to the lakeside restaurant and we get to see the view of the lake from the other side and we can have some lunch. Suri also gave me little bindi from the temple that we were at this morning and I've got my henna that's all washed off. This is what it looks like. I feel like my hands and my fingers are quite dark and strong but for some reason my arm is a bit blurry. I'm not quite sure why but Helena's has already feed it quite a lot so she might get another one done in Rathambore but I'm really liking my henna. I feel like it matches my outfit today. This is the hotel that True Travels wants to switch to for the next tour. But we're on the rooftop having lunch. There's a little pool down there. They said we can dip our feet in if we want to. But look at this view. So this is the other side of the lake. 
So the palace where we were at is just up there. And then you can see out all across the lake. How stunning is this? Shuri's over there on the phone. <laughs> ordered a banana lassi and vegetable noodles. The menu had so much stuff, it was so hard to choose. And it's all really decently priced, to be fair. There was the continental stuff and Indian stuff, so it's nice to have the choice or choose in between each one, because sometimes I'm not in the mood for a curry when it's feeling very hot. It's slightly salty, but really nice. I love spring rolls. What about samosa though? I like mm. samosas. They're fried? Yeah, they're fried, but I, I can eat samosas. It's a spicy. It's a little bit spicy, but not super spicy. Super spicy. And these are red peppers, yeah, not chilies. Yeah, red pepper, green pepper. There's no chilli yeah. in there. But well, why is it spicy then? Because they've used a bit of <laughs> red chilli powder. Ah. It's just gone six and I've come up to the rooftop of the hotel and what a spot. There is this pink haze on the horizon behind the hotel by the palace. The sun is setting. I'm watching over Udaipur. There's smoke going. People are making dinner. People are taking their laundry in. The kids are laughing and playing. I'm just watching the world go by. But this is such a serene moment. And I just, it's finally setting. And I think that I am on the other side of the world in India. This is absolutely incredible. And. I can't really believe it to be honest because I was sat here with the bindi that Suri put on my head, my henna, and I'm at, on a rooftop in Udaipur watching the sunset. Life's pretty good. I'm meeting with the group in about 15 minutes and we're going to go this evening to a cultural dance show. There are a bunch of optional activities on this tour and so far the optional activities I chose was palm reading, henna. The palm reading was a thousand rupees which is about 10 pounds. The henna was 500 rupees which is about 5 pounds and tonight's cultural dance show is 300 rupees which again is about 3 pounds. So it wasn't much so I don't really know what to expect but I thought for three pounds, I would like to take in all the culture I can. It was incredible. There were so many different dances. Went on for about an hour. There was also a puppet show. And then afterwards, we got in a tuk-tuk to head to the place where we were going for dinner called Tribute, I think. And then we got stuck in the tuk-tuk. There was really bad traffic. And then we think we figured out why it was such bad traffic. Oh, dead mouse, dead rat. And then, welcome to India. And then we figured out that there was such bad traffic because there was a Muslim wedding parade going on. And then we got out the top top and got to watch the Muslim parade going past. <laughs> the bikes. <laughs> 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 
We're getting on the coach to drive about five hours, I think, to Pushkar. So that's going to be it for the Udaipur vlog. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time for a brand new video. Bye guys!